some more conspiracy fun, right? <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about Elon Musk <laughs> and, and conspiracies um, that Elon Musk is once at, at the same time dispelling and then- Dispensing. <laughs> dispensing, yep. right. Uh, Elon Musk actually, just this week, we can put E1 up on the screen. Uh, he's been subpoenaed um, in the Jeffrey Epstein suit that is being brought by the Virgin Islands. So if you haven't been following this, basically the Virgin Islands is um, in a lawsuit against JP Morgan because they believe JP Morgan was enabling the Epstein sex trafficking mm -hmm. operation, essentially that JP Morgan knew uh, that the bank knew he was engaged in this kinds of in, in this kind of conduct and was enabling it by uh, giving him access to the banking services. They deny J.P. Morgan denies that it had any knowledge of Epstein's crime, but the Virgin Islands is basically saying, as Reuters puts it, that they missed red flags about right. Epstein's abuse of women. Now, a Monday filing in U.S. District Court in Manhattan uh, hit Musk and said that he may have been referred to J.P. Morgan by Epstein, so they subpoenaed him for records related to this. Uh, Musk says, quote, that Cretan, referring to Epstein, never advised me on anything whatsoever. He put out this tweet, you can see it on the screen, we just read that part of it. The notion that I would need to would need to or listen to financial advice from a dumb crook is absurd. JP Morgan let Tesla down 10 years ago despite having Tesla's global commercial banking business, which we then withdrew. I have never forgiven them. The tweet ends. Ryan, uh, what do you make of Musk's, M Musk's reply here? And what do you make of the move by the Virgin Islands to subpoena him? I mean, it, it does seem like a fishing expedition on the yeah. part of the Virgin Islands, uh, but there's plenty of evidence that they did know each other and, and go around in similar circles. Uh, if, you, if you remember uh, back in 2020, it was reported that uh, Epstein was trying to get close to Elon Musk, and to do so, he set his brother up, Musk's brother, uh, with Epstein's former girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also was given a tour of the uh, Tesla, the SpaceX facility out in Hawthorne, California in 2012. So that's Epstein after his conviction touring a SpaceX facility. Uh, he also had some type of a, uh, Musk went to his mansion at one point, mm -hmm. uh, but Musk claimed that he went there only for like a half an hour in the middle of the day because his then wife wanted to do, wanted to do research for a novel. Mm -hmm. uh, Musk said that he was, quote, obviously a creep of mm -hmm. Epstein. Uh, he also had, I think, a, he attended a dinner uh, organized by LinkedIn founder Reed Hoffman. <laughs> uh, Reed Hoffman, who uh, helped finance Eugene Carroll's lawsuit uh, uh, against Trump, a big kind of Democratic donor. Uh, it was, quote, uh, was at his house, and oh, was at his house in Manhattan for about 30 minutes in the middle of an afternoon, but uh, the, said that the dinner was organized by uh, Reed Hoffman uh, and that Musk didn't have anything to do other than kind of accepting the, the dinner invitation. So you know, some significant points of contact between Musk and, and Epstein there. And certainly Epstein would, would want to get close to somebody with, with uh, Musk's global connections and his wealth. And, and like took steps to do that. Like technological interests, yeah. yeah. So while it's a fishing expedition, you know, sometimes you catch fish if you go to the right place with the right bait. Yeah, and I mean, like, it just totally hypothetically, even people who recognized Epstein as a creep, um, who did come into contact with him, may have valuable information about that, especially if they were in that, like, Venn sure. diagram with J.P. Morgan. Um, so it, it's not, I, I think the idea that Musk is implicated in, in wrongdoing is what he's responding to, uh, because it's not fun to get headlines, like, that you've been subpoenaed by the Virgin Islands in the mm -hmm. Epstein lawsuit with J.P. Morgan. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I doubt this leads to anything significant about Elon Musk. Um, who knows? He did sit for an interview on CNBC yesterday. We have one clip here. There, there were a lot of sort of tidbits that came out of it. He kind of, per usual, talked about everything. Um, but let's roll this clip uh, right here. This is E3. I mean, when you, when, you, when you link to somebody who's talking about the guy who killed children in a mall in, in Allen, Texas, and you, you say something like it might be a bad psyop. I'm not quite sure what you meant, but. Oh, in, in that particular case, 
there was uh, a uh, somehow that, that that's not 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 that the the the, the that the RCP people were killed, but the it was I think incorrectly ascribed to be a white supremacist action, um, and the evidence for that. Uh, was some obscure Russian website that no one's ever heard of that had no followers, um, and the, the the company that came, that found this is Bellingcat. Right. And do you know what Bellingcat does? Psyops. Right. I couldn't really even follow exactly what it was you were trying to express there, so that's in part why I was curious. I'm, but I'm saying that I thought this, the, the, the the ascribing it to white supremacy was bullshit. I mean, first of all, he just got Bellingcat as a psyop on CNBC, so major props to him for that because <laughs> he's, he's mostly correct on that point. On the white supremacy point, that's a different question. I think it's uh, obvious. I mean, the police have confirmed <clears throat> that the shooter, whose name we won't repeat, had uh, white power tattoos, despite the fact that he was Hispanic and has made this argument. Sagar and I talked about this last week, um, and you can go check out that video because Sagar wanted to talk about this this question of can a Hispanic be a white nationalist? Um, well, his ideology was one of white nationalism. From what we know, he was like actually explicitly making that argument. So whether or not you think that, think it makes sense is another question. Um, the shooter himself thought it did make sense. Right, and there are also white Hispanic people. Like that's that's a thing. Like there's there's enormous amounts of racism in, within the Hispanic community, so that is you know certainly uh, could fit too. But this seems glommed onto more of an American uh, version of it. But right. So I think what's interesting about this is Musk uh, is disgusted that there could be some conspiracy theory about him when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein, but is willing to throw out a much much more ludicrous conspiracy theory. Yeah. Uh, that Belling, so to, to try to explain what he's saying there, because the interviewer was clearly deeply confused. Well, but. and I think Musk was sort of confused too, because I feel like he shoots from the hip. Like, first of all, every time we talk about a Musk clip, I think it's the same thing. Like, the guy seems completely like overworked and overtired, shooting from the hip. Like, he tweets about so much stuff every single day that there's no way he could be like completely versed in every story that he's weighing in on with this like massively influential profile. And I feel like he himself had incomplete information about this theory that he's positing. Yeah, or or selectively in, incomplete, up where we can't know. But so Belling, it's it's not at all surprising uh, that Bellingcat would be the one that would surface this guy's information. What they are is one of the most sophisticated kind of private intelligence companies around the world that works for, you know, a variety of corporate clients, NATO, like they have all sorts of different clients. What they do is they surf the entire internet. They do it in lots of different languages. Yeah. They're very good at it. Uh, they are good at it. And, they're, and it's not surprising that they would be the ones that first would land on this guy's profile. If you give somebody at Bellingcat, say, like just a handle, Mm-hmm. Like here's here's a guy's handle that he was using on uh, Instagram, uh, with a couple of clues, they'll be around the world quickly. Yeah. And the idea that a complete loner nut job uh, was using a Russian-based forum should not at all be surprising. Right. Like so, that's the thing where Musk is saying this doesn't make sense. Therefore, there must be a conspiracy. Like this loner was using this obscure forum to post his racist rants. Yeah. That to to me, to I'm Elon Musk, that doesn't make sense. you you should be posting as a as a loner your racist rants on 4chan or yeah. whatever. Like if and if it's outside of that, then it's a frame up job. And then it gets even crazier. Cause if you draw out what he's actually alleging here yes. and what was being alleged at the time is that this guy was not a white supremacist, but that the feds uh, were framing him up as one, were planting his rantings at, on obscure Russian sites so that they could then elevate the specter of white supremacy mm-hmm. and use it to crush domestic dis- dissent and take away everybody's guns. Like that is the conspiracy that he is alleging yes. happened. And still alleging it after the police have said, no, we have his body. It's covered in white supremacist tattoos. Yeah. And you even had some people, thankfully Musk didn't engage in this, saying, boy, those are really fresh looking tattoos. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, you guys have lost your minds. And 
finally, if you want to take the entire conspiracy theory seriously, this is like the 400th mass shooting mm -hmm. of the year. I mean, that, I'm pulling that uh, number from thin air. It's, we've had dozens and dozens of mass shootings, and we have not, as a result, taken away the guns of anybody. Plenty of those shootings have been by actual white supremacists that nobody denies are white supremacists. So why on earth would the feds think that all what we need is one more? You're orchestrated. We're right. going to orchestrate a mass shooting yeah. because the last 400 haven't allowed us to take anybody's guns away. Yeah. But this one, we just need one more. It's one of those conspiracy theories that's predicated on an often like unspoken truth um, about Bellingcat, right? That doesn't, because that is unspoken and true that they, I mean, they do get information they get funding from the National Endowment for Democracy, which basically functions as the CIA. The propaganda for, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's sort of like what right. the CIA or like the OSS, if you go back, it's sort of like they kind of do that stuff. Um, and so they'd have funded Bellingcat, but that being true and being also unspoken does not mean that there's this broader conspiracy theory and that, that Bellingcat, because they were the first to you know, make this connection right. to white supremacy, um, that they were, it was a setup um, for, to inc increase surveillance powers. Like, listen, they're proud right now to say that they're increasing surveillance powers. They don't need any more predicates. Like, they, they have every, they, they talk about January 6th every single day as a predicate for increasing surveillance powers on average Americans. So, yes, like, just because it's predicated on something that is unspoken and is also true, which is Bellingcast's connection to the intelligence community and things like the National Endowment for Democracy, doesn't mean that, you know, that tip of the iceberg doesn't mean there's everything else under the water. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.